Well, do each of my sins cost me an eternal reward? Are we caught in a race to outweigh our sins by our good deeds in order to preserve any level of rewards that we may have in heaven? It's a question today from a listener named Brandon. Hello, Pastor John. I know the Bible talks about rewards in heaven in the form of crowns. I want the most joy in heaven I possibly can in the life to come. But in this life, I feel like I'm constantly sinning. And every time I sin, I feel like my eternal rewards slip from my fingers. I can never get ahead, always returning back to a balance of zero. At this rate, there won't be any rewards for me in heaven left. Or is my thinking here backwards? Pastor John, can you help me understand this? Well, it's right to want the most joy possible in heaven if the aim is to be satisfied in God himself supremely with the gifts of his grace as secondary echoes of his excellence that then we enjoy for that reason. So amen to that. And I can confirm to Brandon that he not only feels he is sinning every day, he is. (laughs) I can confirm that analysis. (laughs) And so are all of us. None of us loves God perfectly the way we should. In our best deeds, there is something to regret. So, so far, so good in Brandon's thinking. And then things start to go haywire. He says, Every time I sin, I feel like my eternal rewards slip from my fingers. I can never get ahead, always returning back to a a balance of zero. Hmm. Now, in this way of talking, I think he reveals a serious mistake in his understanding of the Bible. The mistake seems to be this. Rewards are given, he would say, he seems to imply, rewards are given not for each good deed, but only for the good deeds whose number surpasses the number of bad deeds. Mm. In other words, if you do five good deeds and four bad deeds, you get a reward for one good deed. And if you do five good deeds and five more bad deeds, five or more, he says, these are his words, you're back to a balance of zero. Now, I'm not sure where he's getting this notion that rewards are parceled out this way, but let me cite some passages from the Bible to show I don't think that's right. There's a very different way of thinking about rewards for good deeds than in this kind of ledger approach. Let's start with Matthew 10, 41. The one who receives a prophet, that's (laughs) P-R-O-P-H-E-T, the one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward, and whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple, because he is a disciple, truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. Now, there's no hint here that if later in the day, after you give the cup of cold water to a disciple because you love his Christ-exalting ministry, you speak harshly, say, to your child, no hint, I say, that you will therefore lose your reward for the good deed of giving a drink of water to the disciple. It says, you will by no means lose your reward. Now, of course, if you prove yourself to be an unbeliever by a life of sustained lovelessness, then even your good deeds are not good deeds because they're not coming from faith. But if you are a believer, the good deed, the work of faith that you do in the morning is not canceled out by the failure of patience in the afternoon. That's not the way Jesus is thinking, or anybody else in the New Testament. Hmm. Or consider 1 Corinthians 3, 13. Each one's work will become manifest, for the day will disclose it. 
because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test what sort of work each one has done. If the work that anyone has built on the foundation survives, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned up, he will suffer loss, though he himself will be saved, but only as through fire. Now, what's plain here is that fire is not an accountant. Fire is not counting up numbers of good deeds and bad deeds, Hmm. or in this case, solid teachings and useless teachings. I think that's the context of what good deeds he's talking about. Fire doesn't work that way, right? It doesn't count. Fire doesn't count. It just consumes wood, hay, and stubble. It consumes useless, harmful works or teachings, which by implication means it does not consume useful, good, righteous works or teachings. They survive the fire, and presumably they survive no matter how many bad works got burned up in the fire. If we're true believers, the good works survive. The the biblical picture of the judgment of Christians is not like Brandon's picture of counting up bad deeds and counting up good deeds and only rewarding the good deeds if there are more of them than bad deeds. That's not a biblical picture of judgment. Or consider Ephesians 6, 8. We know that whatever good anyone does, whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bondservant or free. No mention here that he he really won't receive back for doing the good deed. If there are more bad deeds, he won't. Or consider Luke 14, 13. When you give a feast, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you, for you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. So if one Thanksgiving dinner, one Thanksgiving, You invite lots of international students and maybe some older folks who don't have any family nearby and maybe a homeless man that you met on the street. You invite them to to Thanksgiving dinner and you share your bounty joyfully with them in the name of Jesus. It says you will be repaid at the resurrection of the just. And that is true. Even if the next Thanksgiving you are in a bad place spiritually and selfishly let the opportunity go by. Thanksgiving number two gets burned up. Thanksgiving number one is rewarded at the resurrection. Here's the principle behind this way of thinking. Good works in the life of a Christian are rewarded because they are beautiful and their beauty is owing to the beauty of God's regenerating and sanctifying grace in the life of the Christian. We are able to do what is truly good only because God caused us to be born again, made us spiritually alive, and because His Spirit goes on working in us what is pleasing in His sight, Hebrews 13, 21. The rewards are God's way of confirming that we are truly born again, truly in Christ, truly the children of God. It is so crucial never to forget Ephesians 2, 8 to 10. By grace you have been saved through faith. It is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, gift of God, gift of God, not of works, so that nobody will boast when when the rewards are passed out. For we are his workmanship, not ours. We're not writing our own poem. Created in Christ, created by God. We don't create ourselves for good works, and even the good works God prepared beforehand that we should walk in. I mean, the point of that text is to get God, God, God as the source and goal of all of our good deeds. So, When we are rewarded for those good works, it is the workmanship of God that is being celebrated. And that workmanship does not cease to be properly rewarded because there are other remaining sins 
in our lives. Amazingly freeing word, Pastor John. Thank you. And Brandon, thank you for the clear question. And thanks to everyone who listens. If you want new episodes of this podcast delivered to you, subscribe to Ask Pastor John in your favorite podcast app in Spotify or by subscribing to DG's YouTube channel. And to find other episodes in our archive or submit a question to us, do that online at desiringgod.org forward slash Ask Pastor John. Well, on uh, on Monday, we're going to return uh, with a question about quarantine habits. We've, we've all had a lot of time at home these days. And uh, this question coming up is searching. It's a searching question from a, a young woman who wants to know what her quarantine entertainment habits are revealing about the state of her own soul. Why, when she's most afraid of what's going on in the world, why does she most often turn to Netflix? That's queued up for us on Monday. I'm Tony Ranke. Have a great weekend. We'll see you then.